Hello everyone and I hope you're doing well. Today we have another Master Duel deck list that I've been having a lot of fun with. Now it's been a little while since I've done a Master Duel deck but I have been inspired. My friend Sean sent me a deck list, a runic deck list to be specific, based around milling. Which isn't surprising for runic but it includes some of my favourite cards. The Jar cards. Now if you know anything about me, you know Jars are my favourite cards. I love playing them. I love collecting them. I've got my little collection here. I'm sure one day... I'll show it off. And it's even my sleep paralysis demon. <gasps> ah. So any chance I get to play jars, I will. And today we're going to show off what they can do in a mill strategy. Introducing jar runic or junic for short. So here is the deck list in Mastered All this evil, evil list. Uh, unfortunately, it's slightly worse than the TCG version because Cyberjar is banned, and uh, that makes me sad. Please come let me give this back in Master Door. I love this card to bits. But uh, basically, the entire strategy is to mill out your opponent as fast as possible. Essentially, we'll be using the Runic Fountain alongside the Jars to get through all of our runic spells to banish cards and then we can mill with these as well there's some funny synergies with the reverse jar that we'll go into but i'll go through the card by card now so we have a morphing jar we have to include him discard your whole hand draw five this card is nuts especially if you can flip it exactly when you want it we've got a couple of cards that do that we have three max c now this is actually questionable and i have considered cutting this in the tcg version it is kind of three imper because we do run morganite but i think max c is too good not to run and uh, we do need a couple of monsters to hit off of the jars. Uh, we have Morphing Jar 2. So this shuffles all the monsters from both sides of the field into deck. And uh, you keep milling cards until you see monsters. And you can special summon them if they're level 4 or lower. So you can basically go into other jars or sometimes the maxi if you get unlucky. Next we have two Reverse Jar. Now this has really good synergy with the Runic Fountain. Especially because it's at 1 in Marsadol. So this flips all monsters on the field to face down defense position as possible and then returns as many face up spill and traps on the field to hand and then each player can set cards equal to the amount returned now what this means is you can activate the runic fountain do your searches and then flip the reverse jar up get the fountain back activate it again you can get more searches it's got some really funny synergy and not to mention flipping face down is always a good way to interrupt your opponent we have card destruction because it wouldn't be a mill deck without it this is one of our wing cons if you can get your opponent to draw enough you can use card destruction to just yeah win the game because they have to draw out the rest of their deck we have three upstart goblin because we want to see our runic stuff and our jars as soon as possible similar reasoning with pot of duality just be careful you don't want to special summon with a, a runic spell on the same turn uh one day of peace keeps you alive for a turn lets both players draw one pretty good we have two time tearing morganite this card is really good for seeing multiple runic cards and not to mention setting multiple jars is nice as well the reason that max c is not as great is because of this card but it's just too good not to run in this deck specifically we have the runic fountain obviously i mean we're playing runic we have two book of moon because we can flip our jars back down but it is also a good interruption as well uh, same with book of eclipse we can flip all our jars back down but yeah good interruption against a lot of decks we have soul and luna which is a really really spicy card i really love this card actually uh, so you target a monster you control and one monster your opponent controls and if it's face up you set it and if it's set you flip it face up so you can quick play flip up your jars basically a book of taiyu but better so during your opponent's main phase you can flip up your morphing jar 2 your morphing jar your reverse jar i mean you mainly want to be doing it on two uh but it's, it's a really really good card and uh, not to mention you can do it on your turn as well if they have a monster so it's just a better book of taiyu of course we now have the runic stuff we have Two Runic Tip, three Flashing Fire, one Runic Destruction, two Freezing Curses, two Slumber. We do run three Smiting Storm because we're running low on Runic names, especially because of all the limits in Master Duel. Ideally, we would have more of like Destruction or Flashing Fire, but Master Duel ban list hits different. Uh, we have two Runic Golden Droplet just because it is quite good into, say, a Morphing Jar or Card Destruction. You can get them to fill up their hand and I then discard it away. And then last we have a runic dispelling, which uh, is okay. I mean, I always have to stop myself from putting three in because I love the discard effect, but 
Um, in this deck, there's not too many ways to get there. If you really want to be spicy, what I used to do is play three Dark World Dealings, because when they draw, it triggers the Runic Dispelling. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit too inconsistent for me. Next, we have the extra deck. I mean, most of it's pretty obvious. It's literally just runic stuff. We got three Hugin, two Moonin. I, I mean, we just filled it up with stuff, really. Uh, three Jerry. We have Freki, three of them. Two Slips, Slipnirs, sl sl Slipknots. Uh, we have Lingarebo, just in case they Ib us, even though it wouldn't matter too much. And SP Little Knight. Now, the difference here, we would have Master of Ham, which I'd put on the screen, but that's not in Master Door yet. Um, and we'd put in an Instant Fusion as well. Which is basically flip monster synergy. You special summon a flip monster from your deck, which is crazy. And we'd also have Typhon, but we don't have that either. But without further ado, let me go through some games. And uh, I'll be doing three games because they are a bit long. So let's get into Going it. into our first game, we go against Unchained. We're going second, unfortunately, which is uh, not too big of a deal with this deck, to be honest. Got a decent opening hand. We got the Fountain as well, which is nice. He's going to start with the tour guide and go into the Aruha. He's going to set one card face down and go into the Lord of Yama. Using the Lord of Yama effect to add the Shavara to hand. He's then going to activate Abomination's Prison, going into the Escape of the Unchained. He's going to set a card and then use the Shavara popping the Escape from the Unchained using the Escapes effect to bring out the Sarama. He's going to set the Escape again and pop the set Abomination's Prison that he had. He's going to go into the Shyama and then link two into the doggy woof he's then going to use the two to go into king caesar and pass turn on that not too intimidating of a board uh but maxi does help him a little bit but we're only going to special summon one at most we go for the upstart goblin first see what we get off the top one day of peace yeah let's go again why not no damage is always a nice bonus we're going to start with the reading tip to bait out any ash blossoms none there fortunately we're going to go for the flashing fire we're then going to go for the runic fountain he's going to chain the escape targeting the doggy and our fountain but if we chain the flashing fire to get rid of the doggy suddenly the escape will not resolve since there's not two targets to destroy so our runic fountain will be fine Going on, he'll use the doggy effect, target the, was it Sh Sharama, and then Lord of Yama to do something that I'm not aware of, and we're about to find out. Bring back the doggy. No, that's not good. Uh, he's going to add the Sarama back to hand as well. We're going to have Riddick Freezing Curses to negate the Soul of Rage, the doggy. And then we're going to use the Riddick Fountain for three to draw three. Broken. We're going to use Time Terrain Morganite so we can set two jars and a Book of Eclipse. So we have our game plan in action. There's two jars going on. He's going to go for the Sarama, target the escape. We're just going to chain a runic tip to search a card. We're just going to grab the flashing fire for the special summon destruction. He's then going to set the escape once again and pop the doggy. The doggy effect will go and he's going to add, try and add one back to hand. But we're just going to go for runic fountain for one because we're pretty certain he's going to be able to pop this at some point we draw into a pot of duality which isn't going to help us which is a shame we do still have our book though he has the tour guide and he goes to the aruma popping the escape going into the shavara at this point i think book of eclipse is a good option we can flip everything face down he's going to flip the king caesar but he's going to go for morphing jar too but unfortunately for us he can negate it with king caesar that's fine we still have a reverse jar and all of his monsters are flipped face down so he can't do anything else from this turn it's a sad day when Morphing Jar 2 gets uh, gets negated. Abominable Chamber gets set from the Shavara, and then everything gets flipped up, and he draws three. See, that is usually a disadvantage, but in a mill deck, that's pretty brilliant. We draw two because of Morganite. We're going to start with the Flashing Fire target the Caesar, then we're going to chain the Smiting Storm to banish five cards, because, I mean, that's the most they're going to have, I think. We're getting quite low on cards, 13. We'll kill that and then go for the Runic Fountain, target two. He's going to go for the King Caesar to add a Dark Contract, which is fine. Get more cards out of your deck, feel free. He adds the Dark Contract. We're going to shuffle two back in and then draw two. We drew into our Morphing Jar, fantastic. Uh, we go for the Upstart Goblin, we go for the Reverse Jar, flip everything face down and return the Runic Fountain back to our hands. We can activate it again. Go for the Slumber to flip our or protect our Reverse Jar, mainly just the Banish Three. We'll go for the Golden droplet to make him draw one banish four shuffle again let's set the morphing jar and go for soul and luna this is the game winning play we're about to discard everyone's hand including his eight cards and make him draw into nothing ggs unchained
Honestly, this is such a fun deck, and you can see the card destruction in hand as well. Like, it's so silly. The fact that jars actually work is brilliant. Going into our second game here, we're going first. We're actually playing as a very spicy list, which we will see shortly. We drew into our fountain again, which we seem to be really lucky with this, but it uh, doesn't matter too much. We could have gone into Hugin. We're going for our Upstart Goblin going into our Maxi, activate the fountain, go for Smiting Storm to bring out the Slipknot, and then we're going to go for the Golden Droplet to make them draw one and banish four. Let's have a quick look at their banishes. We can see there's two Runic cards, a Unicorn, and a Maxi. So this is like Banish Pile. I love it. Uh, so we're going to go for the Runic Fountain. And because he drew a card off a of Droplet, we'll get a token as well uh, from the Slipknot. I'm really not sure the benefit of the tokens, but they're kind of cool, I guess. We're going to shuffle two back and then draw two. We drew into Book of Moon and a Reverse Jar. Reverse Jar being incredibly good against this deck. Uh, he's going to go... In draw phase, we're going to go for the Slipknot, and then we're going to go for Runic Flashing Fire on his side to pop the Slipknot, and we're going to chain Maxi because we saw the Unicorn, so we can assume there's more Cash Tierras going on. He banished one of our Morphe Jobs, which is a shame, but we do still get our token. He's going to special summon Cash Tira Ogre and attempt to use Cash Tira Ogre Effect to add Big Bang to hand, which, uh, again, very interesting. But he added a card to hand, so we're going to use the Runic Dispelling to get rid of a Runic Slumber and banish two off the top. He's going to go for Cash Tira Theosis, but unfortunately for him, we have the perfect answer in terms of Flashing Fire to pop the Ogre so he doesn't get the summon. Unfortunately, this means that he will get a another summon if he has another Cash Tira, but we want the draws here. We drew into two Book of Eclipse, which, again, is good, but not on this turn. He's going to special summon a Cash Tira Fenrir. Add Tillaments Cash Tira. Feel free to mill yourself, my good sir. That is what we're trying to do to you. He special summons, banishing a Cash Tira Theosis, using the Tillaments Cash Tira effect and Theosis to add the Unicorn back to hand and mill three from his deck. Thank you. That helps a lot. He adds the Unicorn to his hand and then the mills will commence. Gets a few guys, but he tributes summons Cash Tira Unicorn, so we're just going to Book of Moon that. Not sure why he did that, really. He sets a trap, which it can assume it will be that Cash Tira Birth or Big Bang that he added. Uh, we draw into a tip. We're going to go for Upstart Goblin. Unfortunately, it's the Cash Tira Preparations, which is pretty good, considering there's so much banished. We'll chain the tip. Uh, just why not? We like high chains here. We're going to add the Runic Destruction so we can get rid of the problematic Cash Tira Preparations. He grabs the Unicorn back from the Banished. We draw into a Slumber. We're going to go for the Runic Destruction, get rid of the Preparations. We're going to go for the Smiting Storm uh, to Banish 2. And then we're going to go for the Fountain to Shuffle 3 back and draw 3 cards. We have a lot of options here. And we flip the Reverse Jar. So this will let the Cash Tier Unicorn go face down and bring back the Fountain. Now that Fountain's back, soft once per turn, by the way. We're going to, to, going to go for Freezing Curses to summon Hugin using... The Jar and the Hugin to go for SP Little Knight. We're going to get rid of that Unicorn. Now we're going to go for Slumber. Just target SP to protect it and banish top three. Just so we can use the Fountain again to draw three. So many cards. Oh, sorry. It was draw two. I guess it was draw two. My bad. Uh, so we set a Soul and Luna and Freezing Curses. Now we really should have set a Book of Eclipse considering we play against Cash Tira. But that was our misplay this game. He's going to go for Freezing Curses to negate the SP Little Knight. And we'll just chain the Maxi because we might as well against Cash Tira and runic like they both just special summon whenever they feel like it he's going to flip the unicorn and attempt to go for the unicorn effect and we'll use the freezing curses to negate it so we can't get access to his birth because birth is insane especially when you've banished half your deck we'll now go for the runic fountain shuffle one back to get the reverse jar welcome back he's going to normal summon rise heart banish the big bang He's then going to use those two to go to Shangri-La, and end phase passes back to us. We have the Sol and Luna set as well, so we do we are doing pretty good at the moment. We're going to use a Maxi on the Shangri-La to get another draw, because we seem to have Maxi every single time this game. No Morganite as well, so Maxi is just that good. He brings out the Scareclaw, Cash Tira, and we go into Flashing Fire from Maxi, so we're just going to use that on the Scareclaw Cash, and he realizes he's going to lose. I mean, considering our hand... All five of these cards are insane against Cash Tira. Um, yeah, he, he had no chance. This was his worst matchup. So going into game three, he's not exactly playing meta, but he really holds his own, and I it's a really fun duel, so I had to show it. Our opening hand is amazing, to be honest, other than the two Morganites. We drew into Fountain again, which is a recurring theme in these replays. Uh, we have we go for Time Tearing Morganite and then go for the Runic Fountain, then use a Droplet to go into Freki. We're then going to return the Droplet with the Fountain, draw into a Maxi, which is now dead because of the Morganite, but we set the best card in our deck, Morphing Jar 2. Now he reveals what he is on. He's on Heroes, so he's going to use Faris, Pitching Vion, using Faris Effect to put Increase in the Spell and Trap Zone, Increase Effect to get rid of the Faris, and then Increase is going to bring out Vion. 
Vion is going to send Malicious from the deck, and then Vion is also going to banish Vion to add the Vanilla Poly. I love seeing the Vanilla Poly because you know it's a nostalgia deck. We're going into Infernal Deceiver, using the Infernal Deceiver to reveal a guy that I can't see, but he adds Buster Nitrix, which <laughs> it's just based as fuck. He goes into Malicious to use Malicious, and uh, goes into Wonder Driver using the Malicious that he summoned. He's going to use the Polymerization using Buster Nitrix and Avian. I believe it's Avian, and uh, go into the new Flame Wingman using the Hero Wonder Driver to add the Poly back, and then using Flame Wingman to add Favorite Hero, which is one of the most busted equip spells probably in the entire game. There goes the Poly right back down. He's going to use the Flame Wingman to go into Sunrise, which is probably the scariest hero monster because it adds Miracle Fusion, and even Edison players are scared of Miracle Fusion. Miracle Fusion is going to banish pretty much everything from his graveyard, which is really scary. I love this animation, especially when he fuses a million monsters. He's going to go into Wake Up Your Elemental Hero. He's going to equip Favorite Hero to Wake Up Your Elemental Hero, and uh, he's going to use his favorite hero to use Supreme King's Castle. He's going to swing with the Wake Up Your Elemental Hero and use a Sunrise effect to target the Freki to pop it. But Freki will banish two first. He's then going to redeclare onto the Morphing Jar. He has an effect to burn me for the amount of attack, but Morphing Jar 2 will still activate and shuffle everything back into the extra deck. And because Morphing Jar 2 is dead, I don't get any either, so that's just a board clear. We take 800 from the Wake Up Your Unlimited Hero, but looks like we're back at an even board state, and because we're drawing 2, we're in a better position than he is. We're going to use Flashing Fire to bring out the Slipknot, and then use Runic Fountain since we're quite desperate for 1. We're just going to set another Morphing Jar 2 and a Book of Eclipse. Usually pretty good interruptions, but against a deck that fuses, maybe not. We're going to go for the Slipknot, get a Slipknot token, and uh, he's just going to pass. That's good for us, but luckily for him, we can't OTK. This is a slow grind game. He has 22 cards left in the deck. Make that 21 with one day of peace, drawing into a Book of Moon. Uh, we trigger the Slipknot because of one day of peace, and yeah, I guess we'll go into battle. We'll just give him a little kiss. Two kisses. This guy doesn't get a kiss. He, he's... He's too young. He was, he was born this turn. Uh, he's, we're going to go for Slipknot again. Let's get another token. Why not? And uh, he's going to go for Stratos. Oh, what a classic card. He adds the Liquid Soldier. He's going to go for Vision Hero Faris, which is an amazing card. He pitches the Liquid Soldier, go for Faris, put the increase here, and then he's going for Cross Crusader. Now he gets to target the Malicious, bring it back, and then tribute the Malicious to add Adjusted Gold. This is very interesting. I love heroes. You can do so much with it. Uh, pitch the adjusted gold to get another Supreme King Castle, which pretty much just lets him fuse from anywhere. He's going to go for Dark Calling for um, Hero Malicious Bane. Very scary card. So on the resolution of that, we're just going to Book of Eclipse. He's going to go for the increase, getting rid of his Link Monster just to summon the increase. He'll get a draw off the flip of Malicious Bane. And... Uh, we draw two. Now we have a lot of options here. Unfortunately, the maxis are dead, so they're pretty much nothing, which makes good use of our card destruction. But let's see. We're going to flip the Morphing Jar 2, and uh, he's going to go for Imperm on the Morphing Jar 2. That's really sad. But we have the Book of Moon, so we can dodge that. Thank God, because Morphing Jar 2 is pretty much our win condition. We're going to set the Morphing Jar 2 so that it can resolve, shuffling everything back. Now, we shuffled one monster back into the main deck, so we're going to start milling until we hit one monster, and we special summon it in face down defense if it is level 4 or lower, and he will do the same shortly. Uh, we're milling a lot of runic cards, so that is one of the benefits of the Morphing Jars. We will just be able to draw three forever now, and... Um, Really want to see a monster now. Yeah, there's Reverse Jar. So he's going to do the same. He's going to start milling. And he hits a monster after one mill. Good for him. Good for him. We're going to go for Golden Droplet to make him draw one Banish 4. He's got nine cards left in deck. I'm going for Runic Fountain, target three, because we've got so many engraved. And then draw three. I'm going to Runic Smiting Storm to Banish 4. And uh, set a Maxi and a Jar. How many cards have got left now? Five. We're nearly there. Very nearly there. He's going to flip the... Shadow Miss and then Normal Summer Stratos add the Adjusted Gold is down to three cards in deck. He's going to link off into Wonder Driver. He's then going to use the Faris. He seems to have this every turn. Uh, and then go into the Adjust... Or pitch the Adjusted Gold and then try and set the Miracle Fusion. But we're going to go for the Freezing Curses. He's going to use Super Poly though to dodge this. Which is a very smart play from him. And uh, he'll get that shortly. 
I forgot Super Polly had a different animation. Into Sunrise, which is very scary considering how many cars he has in the graveyard and now has a Miracle Fusion. We're going to go for the Runic Fountain, though. We're going to target three and uh, draw three. Hopefully, we get something that gets us out of this. A couple of decent cards. Uh, we got the Miracle Fusion. He's just going to fuse two into Absolute Zero. Again, this guy loves his Edison cards. We'll go into Flashing Fire, get rid of the Sunrise, and then we'll go Runic Slumber to Special Summon a Runic from deck. Mainly just to mill the last cards, because he'll banish three from Slumber, but will only banish two from Flashing Fire. So we mill three. Oh, maybe we don't. Because <laughs> we special summon. But, hmm. He has one card in deck. We have card destruction, but he only has one card in hand. So we're so close, yet so far. We're just going to flip the reverse jar. And uh, he's going to go for favorite contact. Let's have a quick read of this. Special summon one fusion monster from your extra deck that mentions a hero monster's material, ignoring its summoning positions, by placing the fusion materials mentioned on it to the bottom of the deck in any order. From one cards in hand, field or graveyard, or your banished cards. Or your banished cards is the key bit here. <laughs> and um, watch this shit. <laughs> we had three cards. Or well, one card, and now we have 18 in deck. That's very scary, but wake up your enemy as a hero and we'll get flipped face down, and he can set his field spell back because of reverse jar. We flip up morphing jar too, and we're going to start milling again. Let's see how many cards we build this time. Three. Uh, just three. That's not bad. And then we get the maxi as well. Oh, four. Oh, yeah, we had three monsters. Five. So, oh, my God. Yes, yeah, so, suddenly we've got less cards in deck than him, which is actually very impressive. We've got a Morphing Jar and two Maxis. We're just going to go for Runic Destruction, target the Field Spell, so that he doesn't pull that shit off again. I'm going to go for Runic Fountain, and then go for the Card Destruction. Now we'll use the Golden Droplet to Special Summon Hugin, just so he doesn't get a big Destruction off, or attempt to try and protect from that. We're we'll going for Runic Destruction, Shuffle... Uh, sorry, Runic Fountain, Shuffle 3, draw into a Morphing Jar, Upstart Goblin, and Golden Droplet. Ah, oh, okay. He's still in this. He gets straight us into Liquid Soldier. He's going to go for Polymerization that he set ages ago. Go to Absolute Zero again. Now, that's actually very scary for us. He's going to go for the Liquid Soldier to draw two, then discard one. He's going to link two into Cross Crusader. Now, he goes for Ab Zero, Chain Link One, and then Cross Crusader, Chain Link Two. So, we can't actually use Hugin here. Either that or I misclicked. But as far as I know, the Hugin prompt didn't come up. He special summons the Denier, which is very interesting. Hugin, because it was popped, will get shuffle itself back in. And uh, he gets to put a Destiny Hero back onto the top of his deck so he puts malicious back on the top uh we go for hugin just put that back and he's gonna go link to into dread decimator which is just a 3200 guy we're just gonna go for a runic golden droplet to make him draw one banish four he's on five cards again although i don't trust that that's gonna stay low forever we draw three we drew runic freezing curses we're just gonna summon a frecky he attacks into the frecky but we will get to add a quick play back to our hand which is fine we grab the runic freezing curses again so this is a simplified board state that we are looking for he's got five cards left in hand we've got more cards in our hand than his deck we're going to negate the dread decimator because he's to banish three and then pop it to banish two and he has no cards left in deck we might as well draw just in case and uh i mean we've got runic spells out the ass and he's got well nothing gg hero player you really really gave me a run for my money now <laughs> Sorry for the few mistakes. That was very hard to keep up with. But that one, what was it? Favorite hero? The, the fusion? Oh my god. Just Yeah, I'm just going to fuse 19 cards into one guy. But Morphing Jar 2 dealt with it so easily. So, did you enjoy the games? I will say one disclaimer. This deck will not be good for climbing ranked because games do take a long time. But... Yu-Gi-Oh is all about fun, and I think this deck is extremely fun. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this deck, because I'm kind of biased to Jars. Anyway, that being said, if you made it this far in the video, please do feel free to hit subscribe. New Yu-Gi-Oh videos each week, and as always, happy dueling.